seen anybody. You've already been chewed wild, but been, you're okay. not, you know. Oh, I didn't know that. It's not 1976, so that you meant. didn't get the reference. Bad teammate wild. Well, that maybe it was a your time <laughs> machine to get that one. reference. Nick, Nick, I got it, it was new to him. Thank you. It, Thank yeah, you. it was new to Let's him. Let's run the yeah. fast break. My my biggest it supporter, Chris Broussard. Uh, as of this morning, <laughs> love you, buddy. It would appear that the Lakers' big plan to improve upon next year, you know, improve upon their 33 and 49 season, where they didn't even make the play-in tournament, is to run it all back. Russell Westbrook yesterday picking up that 47 million dollar player option will return to the Lakers next season. Nick, you buying that Russ and the Lakers can work together? No, of course not. And Harrison Fagan from Silver Screen and Roll got it exactly right because Jovan Buha from The Athletic wrote a story saying the Lakers are trying to shop Russell Westbrook, but they don't want to attach any picks to him. And he said that's like walking into a restaurant, sitting down and being like, I'm very hungry, I'd like a meal, I will not pay. And then just staring at the waiter. You gonna do anything? <laughs> Make your move, buddy. Like, no, you're not gonna get any food, pal. And so, uh, unless we like to take sympathy on you, and I don't think that's gonna happen around the NBA. Here's my issue with the Lakers' refusal to attach a pick to move off a player they clearly don't want. Brew, do the Lakers think they're gonna be a bad team in a few years? Are they planning for that? Are they, are they planning that Anthony Davis is going to demand out? They might be like, oh, well, LeBron's not going to be there anymore. That's fine. Then you have a massive amount of cap space. You're the Lakers, and AD is still there. This obsession with, oh, yeah. we've got to keep our 2027 or our 2029 pick. You, Anthony Davis is under contract. He's 29 years old. LeBron is either going to be awesome forever or leave, and you're going to have money to sign somebody. The, uh, the I will go back to 2018, just quickly. The Lakers, when they were deciding whether or not to trade Kyrie or where they were going to trade Kyrie, they could have had, or the Lakers, the Cavs, pardon me, they could have had Paul George. But the ownership in Cleveland were like, no, we need to plan for our future. So we'll take the package from Boston that comes with the eighth pick. Oh, my God, the eighth pick that was Colin Sexton, who they're about to let walk in free agency after a mediocre rookie tenure. Like, it, it, try to win right now, and so they're not, and so no, I don't think it's going to work. That's my short and long answer. Nick, I, I, I think there's some bizarre world that a lot of NBA GMs live in, and when they get together at the All-Star game and everybody's there, they, they, they praise the guys with the picks. So Sam Preston, even though his team is horrible, has all these picks, so everybody's bowing down to say, wow, you got all these first-round picks. And, and um, Rob Palika doesn't want to embarrass himself in that group by giving up another first-round pick. I'm with you. It's ridiculous. I'm not saying John Wall is what he was six years ago, but I think they should have traded Westbrook to try to get John Wall, put that pick with it, and bring Wall to the Lakers because Wilds no, Nick's right, it will not work. All right, even if, look, with AD and LeBron healthy, the Lakers are going to be pretty good, and uh, Westbrook won't derail that too much. They can still be a playoff team and maybe make a little bit of noise there, but they can't win the Western Conference as currently constructed, and if Westbrook becomes what they want, a, gr a defender, then he's not going to be Russell Westbrook, and it's not a big three. He's just going to be a pretty good role player. But even in his 15th year at age 34, which will be in November Wilds, he's not going to become a great defender. So what are you doing, Lakers? No, no Wilds, it will not work. Okay. I think it can work. And I've laid out the three things I want Russ to do. And then I went on a deep dive of Russell Westbrook horrible missed jumpers, and I'm going to add a fourth. The three things I wanted Russ to do was, one, not play, you know, amazing defense like Mr. 94 feet, uh, Patrick Beverly, but just play solid defense and Darvin Ham back me up. Thank you, Darvin. Then I wanted to be, stop taking threes. It's not even something you have to do. It's just something you have to not do. So that's easy. And I also wanted to become a better free throw shooter. Not all of a sudden better than he ever has been, just back to who he was five years ago when he shot 85%. And then I went down after I had a meeting at the Handsome Men's Club. I spent hours, not joking, hours, 
<laughs> watching all the old Russell Westbrook bad shot video. And I'm like looking at the mechanics and I'm like deep into it. I'm like, I'm not a shooting mechanics person. Yeah, that looks weird, but that's how we used to shoot too. He's always had funky mechanics. Then I read a, a Ramona Shelburne article, Broussard, and it said there was questions around the league of whether uh, Russ's hand was a little bit off or perhaps his eyesight was a little bit off. And it was basically the Lakers responded by saying, no, no, you know, we're always going through the health stuff. And we're always checking everything out. But I do think if I was Russ, I'd be like, you know what? Let me head over to Warby Parker real quick and take a, just a, a quick gander at my eyes. Because we've Sidney. seen depth perception issues pop up in different times in the league. And I feel like it's a, it's a storyline that just hasn't been uncovered. Like Evan Fournier talked about post-COVID. He had issues with depth perception as one of the lasting symptoms. On the other side of the ball, Devin Booker liked the bubble. He said it was a shooter's gym because of the depth perception. We saw Jameis go in and get laced. Where are you and going, said, you know Wiles? what? I didn't realize I needed it, but I do. <laughs> He I, wants, I, he I'm wants telling to you, become a different I, player. Is there and any a evidence here? Man. No, I don't. The, I am saying just, some the of the jump is, shots listen, that an you see him miss transplant. are so egregious. Are so, I, there might be something so more off. than, oh, he's nervous of playing in his hometown. That's all I'm saying. So you if think he's me, blind? I would pop over to Warby Parker. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I think they have a chance. Not blind. That make you feel but he was blind. He became a dark horse MVP contender. No, I'm not. Let's move on. Yeah, Fun exactly, one yesterday yeah. from Wendy. Yes, right. He reported so. Kyrie's opt-in came as a total surprise. Not just a surprise to us, because we were kind of surprised. A surprise to the Brooklyn Nets that they found out when everyone else did. When Kyrie put out his public statement with Shams, Wendy also saying he doesn't know what will become of the relationship between Kyrie and the Nets. Nick, big deal or no big deal? Oh, Jen, I'm really conflicted here. I want to be honest with the audience, as I always do. And my honest opinion is this is a big deal. You can't be finding out what Kyrie's doing via Shams' Twitter account. That's obviously not a functional way to run a franchise, and it doesn't show a great relationship with your second best player. But the reason I'm conflicted is because I want to say no big deal because I want to plant as many seeds and bruise brain as possible so when October rolls around, <laughs> he does what we know he wants to do. Clippers, Nets, NBA Finals, Collision Course. Like, so I don't want to be too far down on the Nets because I don't want to seed any doubt in Bruce brain. I want him to be able to root for his two loves to meet with the Larry O'Brien on the line. But... Because I must be honest, I do think this is a problem, Bru. I don't think this is ideal, and I don't think All it right. shows a great working relationship between Kyrie and the front office. Nick, you need to let the fact that I was right on the Warriors and then right on the Nets, and you were so wrong on the Warriors and the Celtics. You need to let it go. Just let it go. People don't care at this point that I was right and you were the wrong. Sun. So let the fact that <laughs> I was right and you the were wrong sun. go. Just let and it go. Just let it go. Right. They were your third he, he, Here's choice. the thing. Let it go, my <laughs> man. Let it go. All right. They Look, you don't have to convince me because it is not a big deal. This is Kyrie. Oh, I mean, yeah. is it a surprise? The surprise would have been had he walked in there in a suit and tie, shook, looked Sean Marks in the eye, shook his hand and say, we got a deal, buddy. That would have been the surprise, the professional thing to do. This is no surprise. I'll tell you what was a bigger surprise, though, Wilds. I was, Nick, I know you read this, so you know. They were actually discussing and strongly considering a two-year deal and then a four-year deal with incentives. And yeah. Kyrie was considering it as well and shot back with a long-term, uh, you know, option or counter-proposal. And so what that tells me is that both Kyrie and the Nets are at least entertaining being together for the long haul. So I think that's the bigger deal here, that this is not just Kyrie, I'll sign it, and I'm out of here. Maybe, but he was entertaining staying long term. So I think that's a factor. And I think it's a big one, Wilds.
Okay, so I'm going to go back to you, Broussard, because I, I, that was in Shams's article that there were different contract offers on the table. What was surprising to me then was how quickly it went from there's different contract offers on the table and it felt like a healthy back and forth, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we'll do, we'll do the sign and trade. Go, go get it. Did you find like that switcheroo to be shocking that it was like, yeah, we're in long term to all of a sudden like, no, you can walk? No, I think they knew he wasn't going to get a signing trade because they knew, one, oh, okay. the Lakers had nothing to offer, and two, bluff. nobody else wanted it. Yeah, they just called his bluff. All right, let's move about a half hour away from Brooklyn to the Garden, talk some Knicks. Should they go all in on Jalen Brunson? Certainly looks like that's their plan. First things first, back after this. Nick, it's over.